So we have another great snowblower video coming up for you. And in this video, I'm gonna show you, uh, we're gonna do an unboxing video of the Toro Power Max HD 828. So if you decide to order one of these online, you get it delivered to your house, you'll know what to expect. Uh, we'll show you how to assemble it and anything we may encounter on the way. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and subscribe to all of our notifications. That way they will get a heads up when we upload a new video. Around the bottom of the box, you're gonna see a dotted line like this one, and it shows like a razor blade. So the best way to open this box, and believe me, I've done it the other way and it's not much fun, <laughs> is to use a razor blade. Only put your blade knife out a little bit because you don't wanna to go too far into the box and scratch, you know, the side of the bucket or, you know, cut a tire or something like that. So just be careful. You should be all right. So just wallow the line all the way around it. I'm gonna work my way around and we'll remove the top off of this. This is the moment of truth. Which I'm excited about it. And there it is, the Toro Power Max uh, HD 828. Now we're gonna put it together. So the tools you're gonna need are gonna be a 7 16 wrench, a half inch wrench, a utility knife, and a tire gauge. So the instructions for this are going to be, or they should be in this little yellow bag right here. Just going to remove the zip tie that they put on. And there's some hardware in here too. So make sure you do not lose the hardware. But it's not much. Here's the bag of hardware and it's for the handle and um, for the uh, rod that goes over to the chute and to control the chute direction. Right here, the um, rod for the chute control is uh, zip tied right here and also the rod for the um, control that goes down to the gear selection lever. So that is zip tied on as well and you use a pair of scissors or some kind of a knife to remove it. Make sure you don't get cut. Use common sense. All right, and that is all set. We're going to place that to the side. So now I'm going to remove this band right here. So to swing the handle up, there are two uh, bolts you're going to have to loosen and you're gonna need your half inch wrench. And you might wanna disconnect the little snow shovel for the bucket, kinda of place that to the side. Shouldn't need to take these all the way out, but so what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen these, swing this up, and then there are a couple of bolts in that bag that I showed you earlier. And um, you're gonna put those in place down here. There's another zip tie that could be another zip tie right here, and I'm gonna need to uh, cut that too. So you just make sure see if your machine has it. And that should allow the assembly to swing up. All right. So before you swing um, the control assembly up, get one of the longer bolts out of the bag with the uh, locking nut and also with this washer right here. So what that'll do is it'll allow you to put this into place and hold it there. Put your nut in like that, you bolt in like that, uh, curve the washer. Catch your locking nut by hand, always thread it by hand. You don't want to start these, um, you know, with the bolt or anything like that. Then do the same for the other side of the handle. that into place 
and again the washer curved washer and a nut that fits that bolt uh, the other bolts are different sizes so you can't really mess it up it's pretty it just won't work it's pretty self-explanatory so don't be too afraid right suggest using a ratchet wrench if you have one it'll make the process of putting this together a lot faster for you but you don't have to have it Tighten up the top two. There's a curved part to this washer, so make sure it conforms to the curvature on the uh, bar coming up. You know, they're, they're bent on purpose, they're not bent by accident. set on this part of the handle somewhere. So the next step is that I'm going to attach this gear selector rod. It has a couple of cotter pins on it. Uh, this part goes to the bottom of the snowblower and this part with the little cannula up here, uh, I think that's what you call it, uh, goes to the top where the, the um, selector actually is and I'll show you how to put that on in a second. So what you want to do is you want to take the gear selector stick and put it all the way into the fast, fast the um, fastest reverse position, which is right here. Make sure it's on the notch. And then we're going to go into here and we're going to connect this piece right here, that hole, um, to this part right here, the lever, the selector lever that's on the um, transmission of the snowblower. And uh, it's pretty easy to do. It'll only take you a minute. So this end right here uh, goes into the bottom. I'm just going to remove the cotter pin. And I'm going to place that in. Put the cotter pin back in the hole so it doesn't slip out. And then the other end of this has a couple of washers. So you can pull that cotter pin out. Don't lose your washer. So what you're going to do is we're in the re reverse position as I showed you with the gear selector. So there's a lever down here. Pull the lever all the way up as far as it'll go because that's where you reverse gear. And then you may need to twist this little adjuster thing right here. Make sure you have a washer on the outside. You may have to twist this little cannula on this threaded rod to get it into the correct position. And then the other washer goes on the other side up here, right in here. And then you put the cotter pin right in through that hole to lock it in place. There are two washers, so the other washer is going to go on the other side of this, and then that other cotter pin is going to go right through that hole to lock it into place. So I'm going to put that on right now. So this is what it should look like when it's done. Make sure the curvy part of your cotter pin is at the top so that you don't want it upside down because gravity will help to keep it in place and it'll lock right in place for you. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure, and we'll go on to the next part. So when you're done uh, putting this all together, if for some reason that lever doesn't go all the way into reverse or all the way forward, uh, just redo the process. Put the lever back up top all the way into the fastest reverse setting. Pull this lever all the way up with the rod and um, align it once again and you should be good to go. Don't get scared about it. Um, it might take a try or two, but that's how you do it and it's not all that difficult. Just, you know, think through it if that happens. So the next part of the uh, assembly is to install the um, chute control rod and the center of it right here goes into like a little notch that's in the housing. It'll slip right in, go into place, and then you put the rod through three, two holes up here in the front of the, uh, the chute control handle. So these three bolts are 7 16 and there's going to be a square hole on one end, and the way these are designed is a square, um, like a piece on the flange right here on the head of this bolt. So make sure the square piece goes into the hole. You don't want to put a square bolt into a round hole. <laughs> put that in place and catch a um, nut onto the bolt. And we'll tackle the other three. Put that one. And twist that so it locks in. And 
And then the other one goes to the cable. There's a cable right here that helps to control the um, shoot direction as well. And um, it's gonna go in like that. And I'm gonna catch this as well. And now I'm gonna tighten all three of these up with my uh, 7 16 wrench. All right, so you're 92.5% of the way there. <laughs> Take your little snow shovel that they gave you to clear out the um, the bucket in the front in case that gets clogged. And where it goes is right here. Kind of just hangs out. And I'm going to snap this in just like that. Kind of hooks to the bar. And it kind of goes into place right there, which is kind of cool. So I've got to um, undo the strap right here, the shipping strap. And we're gonna lower it off this pallet. Uh, we're gonna check the oil and we're just about there. Okay, so next you're gonna wanna check the engine oil level. So you're gonna twist the thing out right here. Your snowblower should ship with engine oil in it, but you never know. Um, always double check this before you start the snowblower up for the first time. Just gonna wipe it off. Twist the cap and take the dipstick back out. And you can see on this one, see if you can see it, the oil level is right up to the top of the cross uh, hatch section. So you have plenty of oil in it. Let's seat that back in place. So check your um, tire pressure. It says on the sidewall, this tire, that should be about 20 PSI. So make sure it's pretty close to that. This one is a little, little over inflated due to shipping, so I'm going to let some air out, and uh, I'm going to check the other side as well. Okay, so we're right on 20 PSI, let's go around to the other side, do the same thing. So the next part of this assembly is you're going to want to check uh, the clearance of the bottom of the bucket, like the blade right here, and there seems to be a decent amount of uh, clearance under this one, looks like it's already set in the factory at um, an eighth of an inch. But um, the directions that the snowblower comes with says that you might have to set it. So the way to do that would be on a garage floor and I'll show you in a minute. So if you have to set the blade clearance, um, the way the directions tell you to do it is with a couple of paint sticks. They happen to be like an eighth of an inch thick. So you want to put that on one end of the bucket, another at the other end of the bucket. And you can loosen these two bolts right here to bring these um, skates down. Then bring them all the way down to the floor. I'm using the garage floor because it's a level surface. Tighten them up. They're half an inch. And do the same thing on the other side. And then tighten those up. I'm not going to mess with mine because it seems to be correct out of the box. And um, I'm just going to go to the next step. So now you can fill it up with some fresh gas. So this is what I'm using. I'm using the... Um, to the true fuel gas i purchased it at lowe's and um it has it's ethanol free gas it has stabilizer in it and some detergents to clean the engine um so you want to use something decent it'll make your snowblower last a lot longer so when you're filling up your snowblower if you're not using a gas can and you use one of these uh, you may want to use a clean funnel so i'm going to wipe this one out real quick make sure it's all nice and clean Don't want to spill any gas on the machine. And we should be all set to fire this thing up. So the key is in it. Let's set the choke. I'm gonna prime it a couple times. Should be about three times. I'm gonna put it on the fast run setting, and let's give it a rip. So that was the first pull right out of the crate. I didn't edit the video at all. You guys got to witness it. 
So yeah, all I did was adjust the choke a little bit and I purred like a kitten. If you guys have any questions at all, leave a comment on the channel. I will reply back to you and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.